Samsung just recently announced their latest flagships for 2018, the Samsung Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus, and for those who pre-ordered, you should be expecting to receive your device within the next week or two. But in this video, we're going to take a quick look at the Samsung Galaxy S9, get my first impressions on the device, and compare it to the iPhone X. Before we get started, I do want to give a huge shout out to Verizon Wireless for sending us this review unit and help make this video possible. Starting off with the design of the S9, and if you're familiar with the S8 and S8 Plus, you'll notice that not a whole lot has changed, aside from Samsung's new purple color option that we have here. Also, if you flip it over, you will see that Samsung finally changed that ludicrous fingerprint location that was on the S8 and the Note 8 lineup. On the S9, the fingerprint sensor is located more towards the middle of the phone, right underneath the single 12 megapixel camera, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. This location makes it a lot easier to actually reach the sensor comfortably, not smudge up the camera, and is a huge improvement. Now it's been no secret that I have been rather critical of Apple for removing Touch ID in favor of Face ID. However, I do really appreciate the technology and the work that went behind Face ID and the True Depth camera system, but there's just a lot of quirks that go with solely relying on Face ID to constantly unlock your phone. For example, laying in bed or being in a poorly lit room, which generally go hand in hand, or having your phone laying flat on a desk and then you wanna check your notifications, but the iPhone's kinda of far away and it can't see your face, etc. There are countless issues that have been driving me crazy with Face ID. I just wish Apple and Samsung for that matter would have been able to include a fingerprint sensor underneath the display, kinda of like that Vivo smartphone that we checked out back at CES. I also wish Apple included a sensor on the back of the device along with Face ID that can maybe use both interchangeably. The S9 actually gives you this option as you can use the fingerprint sensor and intelligence scan which is just combining the face unlock and iris scanning features at the same time. Now this might seem kind of penny but I just wish Apple gave us more options like the ability to use Touch ID and Face ID together let us decide which one we want to use. And that's what I kind of appreciate about the S9 and S9 Plus. That's just been the theme of this phone so far, is that they really didn't cut corners on all the features that people might want in their phone. To me, it seems that the S9 and S9 Plus kind of have all the features that you might want in a smartphone. A large edge-to-edge -edge beautiful display, dual cameras, of course if you have the S9 Plus, wireless charging, fast charging, a decent sized battery, a headphone jack for those who still really need or want one, fingerprint sensor, pretty good speakers, etc. Now to be fair, the iPhone X does offer most of these features, like wireless charging, dual cameras, beautiful edge-to-edge -edge display, relatively decent battery life, pretty decent speakers, etc. But the headphone jack and fingerprint sensor are two features that in reality Apple probably could have included, but decided not to. For software, the S9 is running Android 8.0 Oreo, which is Android's latest and greatest, but of course, Samsung adds their own flavor of Android on top to spice things up. I will say each year TouchWiz or the Samsung Experience or whatever they decide to name their launcher these days is actually improving with every iteration and becoming better and better each year. You still get useful features like native multitasking, edge panels for those who actually use this, and of course since it's Android you get the ability to customize and change just about anything if the stock experience is not to your liking. On the iPhone X, things are much of the same since its inception which isn't always a bad thing, but I do wish you get some sort of customization like Android devices. iOS 11 certainly had its fair share of issues and bugs when it was first released, but when things actually work correctly, I do still like iOS. Although I am a big fan of Google's material design, I do seem to prefer iOS apps over Android, and of course, the famous ecosystem that ties everything together is just really hard to beat iMessage, continuity between my Mac and other iOS devices, it just all works super well together. One thing I absolutely hate about iOS is notifications and how the operating system handles them. I hate scrolling through loads of already seen notifications. With Android, multiple notifications from the same app are nicely grouped into one, and then if you want to expand on it and see the rest of them, a simple swipe down on that notification will do just that. It's just a better overall system in my opinion. Now one feature that Apple did include inside of that infamous notch with the help of the True Depth camera system is Animoji. Now for those of you that don't know what Animoji is, it's essentially taking an emoji and then recording your facial expressions and mannerisms and displaying that on the emoji, thus creating an animated emoji. Samsung obviously needed to hop on board with what they call AR emoji, but they added their own little twist to it. 
AR emoji can actually create a Bitmoji-like character of you that will use the front-facing camera to help animate its facial features and mannerisms to whatever you might want. I do like the personal touch, but Animoji, AR emoji are just features that I don't use all too often. However, we will be doing a more in-depth video on Animoji vs AR emoji, so be sure to look out for that video soon. Bixby, which is Samsung's voice assistant, is present and still has its own dedicated button on the left-hand side of the phone, but just like Siri, they're both pretty unimpressive to me and not something that I need or want to use. In general, software just always comes down to personal preference, so if you like Android or iOS, I don't think you're gonna be too disappointed with their latest iterations this time around. Overall, performance for each device is what you would expect in a 2017-2018 flagship phone that costs around $1,000. Each phone is packed with their respective latest and greatest hardware and everything is responsive, snappy, and just plain works. Now we will be doing a full camera comparison when our dual camera S9 Plus model comes in, but just snapping a few quick photos here in the studio, you can tell that both phones are capable of taking some really impressive photos. Let us know in the comment section down below which camera you might prefer and keep it locked to the channel for our full camera comparison. So overall, my first impressions of the Samsung Galaxy S9 have been very positive. I'm really enjoying my time with it so far, and although it's not a huge visual upgrade over the S8 or S8 Plus, it can definitely stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the iPhone X. So that wraps up my brief first impressions and comparison to the iPhone X. Let me know in the comments section down below what you want to see about the S9 and what your overall thoughts are about this phone. This has been Dan with MacRumors. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.